There are many medical reasons you may be short of breath which involve your lungs or your heart. Excuse me, I'm breathing. But one of the biggest reasons that limits healthy breathing is your posture. And we're going to explain why in detail. All right, let's examine how posture really limits breathing. So we're going to use Sam here, and we're going to explain it in detail. There's three major areas that tightens up the chest and do not allow the lungs to expand to get full respiration. One is right here where the actual poor posture tightens and contracts all the joints in the ribs, the muscles in the back, and the head all forward does not allow the rib cage to expand. One reason. Number two, can you talk about those muscles in front? So your pec muscles, if you're in a forward flex posture like this, this is going to make your pec muscles become tight like this and not be able to expand and lift how they're supposed to when you're breathing. So your lungs are not going to be able to fill up and you're going to have to work harder to actually breathe. Excellent. And the third reason is the musculature in the abdomen. When things are tight here, it pulls forward on the chest and the rib cage as well. Now let's put Sam into a more proper and look at the space in here where my hands are that's tight now, but if we open up, get the shoulders back, come on, you can do it, Sam. Right in here, you can see, it. can you put your hand in there? Look at the expansion in there. Now. The next thing is there is a diaphragm in here. When that needs to expand, you need to have flexible abdominal muscles so the ribs or the, the lungs can actually expand and out in the out in the abdominal area. We'll show you that. It's called abdominal breathing. Wow, that was a lot to talk about. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Sam, you're pretty quiet today. Come on, wake up. It's Halloween today, that's right. Spooky. <laughs> okay, first thing we're going to do is address that area in the back to loosen things up there. Now, Mike actually has a ball. We're not going to play catch with it, but it actually works good for a fulcrum. So you want a squishy ball that you can actually squish like this, and that works well. Place it here. Now, where you put it between the chair and the back is kind of up to you. We'll start here, but you can rise it up here to work these are to stretch the vertebra and the ribs out at this area. Okay, Mike, go ahead. Now, actually, this is interesting because Mike, as far as we know, invented the stretch using the ball. Go ahead, Mike. So you're going to place the ball in the area Brad recommended, and then you're going to try to lift your arms up like this if you have good shoulders. If one shoulder is a bum shoulder, you can certainly interlock your hands and just go it's comfortable. But notice how I'm trying to extend or arch my back backwards now, preventing that forward flex posture we are kind of stuck in. Now once you get in this position, you're actually stretching your pecs out as well as your abdomens, because when they are flexed like this, they're tight, you are stretching it and you're getting that vertebrae also moving in the proper direction. This over time will allow you to have better posture, right. making breathier, making breathier, breathing become a lot easier. Yeah, we'll work on uh, English later. There's one little addition. If you want to use a cane or a stick and you put it like this. Now, where you put your hands determines a little bit uh, how flexible you're, you are. And it varies the stretch a little bit. So do what's most comfortable. Now, he's very flexible. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so unlike me, I, I get pretty limited. I do like using the stick, though. So that's completely up to you. Do it however works good for you. Boy, it really does a nice job. That fulcrum of that ball is right on the money. You could do this for five to ten repetitions a few times a day, maybe morning, afternoon, evening, and just take your time with it. You can certainly sit here for 10 to 30 seconds or just do repetitions, whatever feels comfortable for you. Good. You Make ball. sure you use a firm chair. It does not work very well if you use a cushion or soft recliner. Now we're going to get into breathing with your stomach. All right, now let's look at breathing and how most people breathe. It's kind of a uh, societal thing. What we do is we breathe and keep our stomach in so we look trim as possible and then try to expand the chest and it really limits the volume of air you can get into your lungs and things stay tight. It is not a relaxed way to breathe. It keeps tension in your body. Let's show you how to do abdominal breathing where the diaphragm can actually expand this way, allowing the abdominal muscles to expand out. It's a nice little trick that Mike is going to show you. To make sure you're breathing through your diaphragm, first off, you're going to be inhaling through your nose and then exhaling out your mouth. Now, to make sure you're actually belly breathing, 
When you inhale, we want to put your fingers in your sides right here, and you should feel your stomach expanding out into them, and then relaxing as you exhale like this. For demonstration purposes, so you guys can and gals can visually see, we're going to place this little pudgy packer right there. <laughs> as I inhale, you see my stomach expanding. As I exhale, you see him go back down. This is belly breathing. Notice I'm not lifting and shrugging with my shoulders like this. As you can see, the packer is not going up and down. So belly breathing is what you want to try to do. Inhale for two to four seconds, whatever you're comfortable with. And then exhale for two to four seconds, whatever feels right for you. And that's how you engage your stomach muscles in order to breathe better, making you less short of breath. That's right. Well, let's put this guy away. They had a rough weekend. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this up. I cannot emphasize how important it is to do the exercise, either a ball. If you don't have a ball, you can use a throw pillow. A firmer one works better. But this exercise at least three times per day. It only takes a minute or so. That is imperative. And then the breathing exercise Mike worked on. And then throughout the day, just think about that belly breathing. Let that belly go out. And then relax. Very important. It's going to make a big difference in your life and how you feel. If you want to check out more videos on breathing techniques, we have another one right here talking about three different exercises you can do to improve your breathing. That's right. Did we make that one? Yeah, you and Bob did. Good. <laughs> That's got to be good then. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet.